What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. It's week 14 of the fantasy football season. One more week until those fantasy football playoffs. Hopefully you've clinched. If not, I got everything you need today in a top 36 running backs video here for week 14 of the fantasy football season. We already did the wide receiver version of this episode. So if you haven't checked that one out, I strongly encourage you to check that one out after today's episode. But let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these running backs. All right, so as you can see, I got my tier maker pulled up on the screen. We got seven tiers to get through all 36 running backs here in today's video. We're gonna be kicking it off in my top tier, the elite running back ones here in week 14. I only got two guys in this tier. It's gonna be Saquon, Barkley as the number one and Devon Achan as the number two. Now, I just want to talk about Saquon Barkley's matchup. This is absolutely perfect for Saquon Barkley. 8.8 .8 fantasy points above the expectation is what Carolina is averaging at the moment. They're giving up 29 fantasy points per game to that running back position as well. That is dead last, 32nd in the NFL. If Saquon Barkley is going to come anywhere close to doing what he did the other weekend when he went for 50 fantasy football points almost, I think it's going to be closer to this weekend. I I'm not saying he's going to do that, but you get what I'm saying. The matchup is going to be mwah, chef's kiss for Saquon Barkley. Absolutely love this one this week. Now going on to my tier two, I do have five guys in this tier. We're going to go from running back three to seven. I got Alvin Kamara coming in at three, Chase Brown at four, five is Jameer Gibbs, six is Kyron Williams, and seven is Bijan Robinson. That is the high end running back ones in this week's slate. I love the matchup for Alvin Kamara. He gets to go on the road against the New York Giants. Currently, they're giving up 3.1 fantasy points above the expectation allowing 23.7 fantasy points per game to the running back position that's 27th in the nfl should be an opportunity for him to continue feasting and Taysom hill is not going to be in this game season ending injury should open up some more goal line opportunities for alvin kamara again with Taysom hill off of the football field for the saints now another good matchup in this tier is going to be kyron williams he gets to play against the buffalo bills the buffalo bills are allowing 4.4 fantasy points above the expectation allowing 25 fantasy points per game to the group that's 30th in the nfl the third worst in the league i think kyron williams he's going to have an opportunity here to have a smash matchup and get into the end zone love what he could do here this weekend now a bad matchup in this tier and not necessarily a guy that i'm avoiding i think he is a must start still no matter what but a bad matchup for Bijan robinson he goes on the road plays against the minnesota vikings the minnesota vikings have been so good against the running back position this year allowing negative 5.2 fantasy points below the expectation really not allowing any extra points 15.1 Per game to the group that's third best in the nfl this should be a tough matchup for Bijan robinson still a must-start player for me not really going to overthink it but it could result in a few less points than we really want out of Bijan robinson here this week now let's go into my tier three tier three is those low end rb ones i got five guys in this tier as well we're going to kick it off at rb8 it's going to be bucky irving followed by josh jacobs james cook david montgomery and then kenneth walker that rounds out that entire tier for me two guys i want to talk about specifically bucky irving is one of them he is questionable with a hip coming into the weekend i don't think it's going to limit him i don't think he's going to miss this game just keep an eye on the injury reports there's obviously a chance that he could re-aggravate it or whatever it may be keep an eye on that i don't expect him to miss at the moment he should be a top 10 play if he does play in this game because the matchup against las vegas is pretty decent for bucky irving now the other guy i want to talk about is josh jacobs now josh jacobs he's coming in at number nine but he plays on thursday night football this is a bad matchup on paper for josh jacobs the detroit lions they've been very good against the running back position as well allowing 5.5 fantasy points below the expectation expectation only 14.2 fantasy points allowed per game to that running back group that's the second best in the nfl and on top of the bad matchup josh jacobs is also questionable with a calf injury so i do expect him to play it's a tougher matchup maybe he's a little bit banged up this could be a recipe for disaster for josh jacobs if you're relying on him but you see the rankings don't really reflect that for me still a top 10 guy in my rankings but i do think we should be a little bit nervous about josh jacobs this week maybe at the end of the day it doesn't really matter anyways so let's look on to the next tier tier four i do have a ton of running backs in this tier i think i got a total of seven of them we're gonna go from running back 13 to running back 19 19 overall coming in at 13 for me it is going to be tony pollard then i got james connor Brees hall tyrone tracy jr deandre swift aaron jones and naji harris now that creates the safe running back two tier for us there's a ton of matchups i want to talk about we got a good matchup for tony pollard he plays against the jacksonville jaguars they're currently allowing 4.3 fantasy points above the expectation and 26.4 fantasy points allowed to the running back position as a whole that's 31st in the nfl so should be an opportunity for tony pollard to get into the end zone should be an opportunity for him to get a lot of fantasy football points 
points. Now, another good matchup on this slate is going to be Tyrone Tracy Jr. He plays against the New Orleans Saints. Right now, they're allowing 4.4 fantasy points above the expectation. That's 24.4 allowed to the group as a whole every single week and 29th in the NFL. So a good opportunity for him to score some points as well. DeAndre Swift, also another good matchup against the San Francisco 49ers on the road there in San Francisco. Also, Roshan Johnson dealing with a concussion right now. Is he going to get cleared or is he not? Still don't know at the time of this recording, but if he's without Roshan Johnson, might be even better for DeAndre Swift. Regardless, the San Francisco 49ers, they're allowing 2.7 fantasy points above the expectation, 23.3 fantasy points per game to the group as a whole. That's 25th in the NFL, so a good matchup for DeAndre Swift. A couple bad matchups, and they're at the back end of this tier. Aaron Jones has a bad matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. They're allowing 3.7 fantasy points below the expectation each and every week, 17.5 five as a whole to the group seventh overall in the nfl and then Najee harris has a bad matchup 2.2 fantasy points below the expectation 17.8 fantasy points per game to the group eighth best in the nfl against the cleveland browns so tempering the expectations in this group with aaron jones and Najee harris but love the matchups for pollard tracy and swift now let's go on to tier five tier five for me has seven more running backs we'll talk about those guys these are the fringe running back twos here in week 14 that's going to take us from running back 20 all the way to 26 we're going to kick it off with rico Dowdle, followed by Isaac Garendo, Rashad White, Chuba Hubbard, Isaiah Pacheco, Nick Chubb, Travis Etienne Jr. That is going to be the entire tier. Only three players that I really want to talk about in depth. Isaac Garendo obviously getting the start. Jordan Mason on IR. Chris McCaffrey on IR. Isaac Garendo, we talked about him as a full 100% fab dump in our waiver wire episode this week. Should be a fringe running back to this week with the volume that he is going to see even if it's against a Chicago Bears defense that has been pretty decent this year. Now a bad matchup for Chuba Hubbard coming in at 23 for me. When you look at this matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles, it's going to be on the road in Philadelphia. They're allowing 4.9 fantasy points below the expectation, only 15.7 fantasy points per game to the group as a whole. That's the fourth best in the NFL. Should be a little bit tougher for Chuba Hubbard. Plus last week, Jonathan Brooks got a little bit more involved, which does make me nervous for Chuba Hubbard in the fantasy football playoffs. Isaiah Pacheco coming in at 24 also has a tough matchup. He gets to play against the Los Angeles Chargers this week. It will be at home for the Kansas City Chiefs, but right now the Chargers are allowing 2.2 fantasy points below the expectation, only 17.3 fantasy points per game to the group as a whole. That's the sixth best in the NFL. And then you also have to account for the fact he's recovering from the injury still and still splitting a couple carries with Kareem Hunt probably caps his ceiling unless he gets into the end zone here this week. Other than that, there's really nobody I want to talk about in depth in this tier. So we'll move on to the low upside RB3s. Only have three guys in this tier. So coming in at 27 for me, it is going to be Jalen Warren, 28 Kareem Hunt, and 29 Gus Edwards. That is the entire tier for me as the low upside RB3s. Jalen Warren, he gets that tough matchup we talked about with Najee against Cleveland. Only 2.2 fantasy points below the expectation, 17 points overall to the group. Should be a little bit tougher for Jalen Warren as well, but he has some PPR upside in this matchup now by far the worst matchup on the slate it does go to Gus Edwards Gus Edwards plays on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs they are allowing 7.6 fantasy points below the expectation only 13 fantasy points per game to the running back group as a whole that is number one overall in the NFL by a significant margin Gus Edwards is going to be splitting touches I think with Kamani Vidal it is a very 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 low ceiling low upside type of play for Gus Edwards you're just hoping for a little bit of volume and you're hoping he falls into the end zone but if he doesn't get into the end zone you're going to be very disappointed with Gus Edwards this week just because of how good that Kansas City defense is. Now let's go on to tier seven. Tier seven has all of the rest of the running backs. We're going to go from running back 30 all the way to 36. These are going to be flex plays only. I'm not very confident in really any of these guys, but if you're in a pinch and you need them because of bye weeks, injuries, whatever it may be, you probably can flex them. 30, Tank Bigsby. 31, Amir Abdullah. 32, Jonathan Brooks. 33, Tajay Spears. Jerome Ford, Zach Charbonnet, and Ray. Sweet baby Ray Davis. That is is the total tier only two matchups i want to talk about in this tier it's gonna be that jonathan brooks matchup like i said it's gonna be tough sledding for chuba hubbard should be tough sledding for jonathan brooks as well and he is playing a complimentary role in this backfield at the moment very hard to trust him but you saw some explosion from him last week you saw a little bit of things that might have got you excited still think he's just a flex play and a very desperate flex play at that now let's talk about tajay spears very similar to tony pollard that is a great matchup should be a lot of opportunities for him to score some points i think there's a chance that the Tennessee Titans are winning this game. I think they could kind of use both of these running backs. Tajay Spears should have the ability to score some fantasy points and should be able to be flexed if you need him this week. Like I said, Jacksonville allowing 4.3 fantasy points 
points above the expectation, 26.4 fantasy points per game to the group as a whole. Second worst in the NFL. Should be an opportunity for Tajay Spears to get a couple passes, maybe find the end zone. I'm not going to bank on that one, but obviously there's going to be some opportunity for Tajay Spears here this week. So there you have it. That's my top 36 running backs as we head into week 14 of the fantasy football season. It is crunch time. Hopefully you guys have already watched that wide receiver version of this episode. If you haven't, you guys can go check that out now at the end of this video. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button if you liked the content today, found something informative actionable entertaining whatever it may be hit that like button for me it is the best free way to show this channel some support and last but not least go join that discord there is a free discord linked in the description 270 plus fantasy football players in there that want to hang out with you talk with you play in some leagues with you whatever you got they just want to play some fantasy football and we want you to be a part of that community as well so make sure you go join that discord with all that being said i have nothing else for you today so i will see you on our next episode until then peace out